Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and what I wanted to do today was actually get a quick start guide for those new players that are coming in that haven't had a chance to actually play Star Citizen before. Um, and maybe they're just saying, hey, you know what, there's a free fly on Star Citizen from November 23rd through November 30th, which means you're going to be able to get in and fly um, for free and test out every single ship that's currently available in the verse, as well as check out all the planets and moons that we have in the game now today. Um, it is worth pointing out that you will need to sign up for an account on the RSI website. Um, and that's going to be free, but you know, you'll just need to make sure that you have some login credentials to get into the verse. And what I wanted to do was kind of just show and kind of tell what you can do in the game today and how you can just get going with the verse. Um, it is also worth pointing out that that time frame, the 23rd through the 30th, that it's also the same window that they're doing their anniversary sale where the vast majority of ships that aren't always available for sale um, come back up. So if you are looking to buy a ship, um, this is a good time to get in and do that. Um, and a lot of times they come with uh, L longer periods of insurance. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the game and we'll show you what it's going to be like as far as when you first wake up and how you can get going. All right, so once you actually load into Star Citizen, this is going to be your main menu or your kind of splash screen where you're really presented with three different options. Um, Universe is ultimately where you can go to visit various places. So you could go to one of your hangars and actually pull out a ship and check it out without flying it. Um, Stanton system is the persistent universe. That's where we're currently at. There's a couple planets available in there that you can check out. Um, for all intents and purposes, that's where you're mostly going to be going. Um, I'm not sure if this is open to everybody right now or not, but the Million Mile High Club is kind of an exclusive little... Uh, kind of an Easter egg type of thing for people that spend a lot of money or refer to a lot of players. I've heard people can actually get in there right now, but I'm not sure if that's the case, but you can check it out. There's not much to do in there. Outside of that, you've got these two other areas, Star Marine and Arena Commander, which are primarily going to be your video game within a video game. Um, Star Marine is going to be like your FPS combat action. So if you just want to get in and shoot people on foot, kind of like, you know, uh, <laughs> just a FPS game, that would be the place to do it. The one that I would highly suggest you checking out before you get into the universe out here is Arena Commander. Um, and Arena Commander is the virtualized version of flying. So there's no consequences for dying. You're not ruining your ship. Um, but ultimately, you've got three different areas, multiplayer, single player, and private. What I would suggest for you all, and take this however you want, but I would come in here and do private. And then I would end up just picking your ship in here, and then I would end up just going in and flying. Um, because ultimately you're going to be in an arena, there's not going to be people trying to shoot you, assuming you pick the right game mode. Vandal Swarm over here is going to be um, you fighting AI. Squadron Battle is going to be you fighting other people. Ultimately, come in, pick Free Flight. It's the one where it's going to be just you on a big map, and it's going to let you fly around and figure out the controls. Because honestly, I can come in and say, hey, this is how you fly. It's a complicated answer though, because I use dual sticks. Some people use a, a HOTUS setup. Some people use a mouse and keyboard. Some people use a mouse and a joystick. Some people use a gamepad. There are a lot of different control schemes out there. So I'm gonna just say, get in here and take a look at the controls and figure out what is gonna do what for you, um, because it's going to really be a, a kind of a personal thing. Um, that being said, if you do wanna just get in and see what your controls are under options, you've got a lot of different categories in here. Um, key bindings is where the vast majority of them are going to be, and you're going to have kind of your ability to scroll in and see what all the different functions are. Um, if you are using something else, you can use this little clicker down in the right corner to flip between the different standard setups, or you can get into advanced and start or binding them all to whatever you actually want them to be. So let's go ahead and jump into the verse. Like I said, we're going to go to Universe and Stanton System. Um, you can choose your region if you want. Like if you know you want to play on USA or EU or AUS, um, you feel free. Best is generally going to pick the one that's got the best, I guess, ping based on your location to the actual server's location. All right. So after you go through the loading, and then the loading will be faster if you have an SSD, um, you're going to be waking up in what's known as like a heavy cube. Um, and this is like a little rental cube to where you wake up. And this particular one, based on the look, is going to be in Port Alazar. There are quite a few different locations, um, but you can see you can move around. Um, if you want to see yourself in third person, you can hit F4 and then just kind of use the Z key in the mouse to look around at your character. Um, and then, you know, you're just going to use your WASD and mouse like a first person game. Now, this is where things get interesting, because you see this open door, you might see that it kind of lights up, but you can't do anything. There's this thing in the game called the inner thought system, which is how you're going to interact with everything in the verse. So what you want to do is you want to hold down F, as in Foxtrot, 
and you'll see that I now have this option to uh, interact. And you can just hit the left mouse button and the door will open. Um, you can hit F pretty much wherever you want. You can see I've got the little crosshair there looking around. There's not any items out here that I'm really trying to or need to interact with, so it's not gonna give me anything. But here we are, this is Port Alizar. You can see we're in the easy habs up here. Um, and as far as getting down to a place to where you can actually pull the ship, that's gonna be two floors down on deck one. So here's deck three, deck two, you can overlook the area. And then once you come down here, you do have deck one where you have the admin office, you have your ship terminals and a couple different stores. Now in here, um, you've got these, I guess like these uh, terminals. Again, we're gonna use the inner thought system to hit F and you can see this is a trading console. So if you wanna actually get into buying commodities at one location and selling them elsewhere, you can do that. Over here, you've got your um, trading console, which is basically going to be the same thing. Um, that being said, I think you can actually do mining from this one, so I need to go back and see. But ultimately, that's where those are gonna be. And you're gonna see those types of displays around several different places. Um, and then these are all going to be your ASOP terminals, which is going to be how you're pulling your ships out of thin air and having them dropped onto landing pads or hangars for you. Um, this dot design is what they're going to look like basically at all locations. Now, before we actually do that, I want to show you another critical component, and that's going to be what's known as the Moby Glass. The Moby Glass is a device that you wear on your wrist that you access by hitting F1. This is going to be how you have a lot of control over your environment. You get to see what your in-game name is, how much money you have, if you have a crime stat, you know, your health, the atmosphere, all of that stuff. And that's just kind of your home splash screen. Down here along the bottom, you've got a bunch of different categories and screens. So Comlink could be how you interact with a bunch of different players. Um, whether you have chat turned on or off in the main screen is fine. You can also add um, interact with friends that you've made. You can uh, manage your party and that sort of stuff happens in here. Your vehicle loadout manager is how you actually can customize your ship with various systems. So, you know, for example, if I wanted to take this Gladius and swap out to a different uh, quantum beacon or quantum drive, I could. Um, same thing with systems and weaponry, and you can customize it to your liking. This is your first time in. I wouldn't bother playing with it much because it is a little bit more complicated and it's kind of like, I don't know, 202 as opposed to 101. Um, but, you know, it's that's access through here. You've got your equipment manager, which is how you actually customize your character with uh, armor, clothing, um, utilities, weapons, etc. And then the last one I really want to show you in here is going to be the star map. This is how you can kind of set destination, see where you are. You can see it's going to start based on where you're actually located. If it doesn't, for some reason, you know, for example, let's say you're over here and you're like, where the hell am I? You can hit this little button right here um, and it'll kind of snap to your location so you'll see where you're at. If you scroll out, you'll start to get an idea of what the universe around us looks like. We've got the planet of Crusader. This is the first planet that we had in the game. Surrounding that, we've got three different moons, Daymar, Yella and Selen. Um, you also have some comm arrays that you can go and visit, which are basically space stations that don't really have livable space. It's more for the purpose of maintaining um, kind of law in the area. Scroll a little bit further out and you get Delamar. Delamar is a uh, asteroid. It's actually here on a temporary basis. It won't be here forever, but it was a first location that they could put us at a different location. Um, and there was actually a, uh, it's a pretty good quantum jump away. And then once you get a little bit further out, you've got um, the other visitable planet that you can go to, which is going to be Hurston. Stanton is the star, and we'll go into a little bit more detail on all of these locations, but that's the star map. Uh, it's mostly used when you're gonna be in your ship, which I'll show you in just a sec. Uh, the other things you have here, contracts manager. If you take a job or you wanna get a job to run a mission, you can. Um, vehicle services, you can see I don't have a vehicle out right now, so it doesn't tell me how much any of these are going to cost. Uh, and then a couple of these aren't really used that much right now, like journal. You can do a little bit of stuff in here as far as interacting with some of the people. Again, I wouldn't worry about this too much right now. And then um, the uh, augmented reality stuff isn't really um, in place yet today. So with that in mind, that's your Moby Glass and you've got your inner thought system. So now you have your two primary ways that you're gonna be interacting with the world around you. So let's go ahead and pull a ship. And you have this list of all of these different ships that are available to you, right? And it's a long list if we have everything available to fly. 
So what you want to do is make sure that it says stored. If it says stored, you know it's right here in the area and you can grab it. I will go ahead and grab, oh, I don't know. Let's just grab like a hurricane. So if you want to get that, you want to hit retrieve. It'll give you just a moment. And then once it actually gets put on a pad, it'll tell you which one you want to go to. So A2. Come out here and you'll look for signage above the doors. A00 through 04, I want to go this way. You'll also have the little indicator on your heads up display telling you where your ship is. We use our inner thought system to get back into the airlock. We come in, you need to cycle the airlock, again, using the inner, lock, inner thought system. Again, I'm on A2, so I'm following the signs. If you look in the bottom left-hand side, you'll notice my heart rate is rising rapidly. It's because I'm running. Um, your characters are not in great shape, so you will notice that your heart rate spikes pretty quick. This right here is an Anvil Hurricane. It's the ship that I spawned. It's uh, having a hard time getting its feet on the ground, but that's okay. And then what you want to do is you want to use your inner thought system. And you can see right now I'm looking around and I'm like, God, I can't actually enter my seat. Well, there it is. There's the orange spot that's outlined, which means it's interactable. If I move farther away and I hit it, you'll see that it ends up, oh, not far enough. It has the yellow outline to kind of help point you in the right direction. So we're going to go ahead and get in this uh, ship. You'll notice that I hit enter pilot seat. And then once you get in, you need to power on your ship. But there's a couple of different things you can do here. You can either just, and again, you want to hold F and start looking around. I can either go power on, which just engages my systems, but not my engines. Um, I can eject. I don't necessarily want to do that. I can turn on my engine. So technically what I could do, right, is I could come in and go, okay, I want to power on and then I want to do engines on and I'm ready to go. Um, it can be a lot faster than that because what, what happens when you click flight ready is it just engages everything and your ship boots up. In the upper left-hand corner um, up here, you'll notice that you can see my shields are starting to come on. Uh, the ship, you can actually hear the engines come on and I'm ready to take off right now. Now, if you're playing mouse and keyboard, um, ultimately what you want to do is you want to hit spacebar and that'll lift you off. And then you'll notice that you can actually just use your mouse to kind of roll and point you in other directions. Um, again, I'm not going to talk too much about controls because everybody's is going to be different and you're going to set it on your own. But what I will talk about is what the information on your heads up display is right here because that is relevant and important to everybody. So um, right here is going to be your current speed. You can see I'm not really moving, so I'm at zero. Once I give it a little bit of throttle, that number climbs. This number up here is the amount of fuel that you have, um, hydrogen fuel. So if you notice that number is starting to dip and you get low, you will crash and fall out of the sky if you're in atmosphere or you'll just stop moving if you're out in space. So you need to make sure that you can keep an eye on your fuel. That will recharge on its own to a certain extent. Um, but if you're doing a lot of afterburning and boosting, it will end up going down faster than you can recover. And then this number right here is actually a slider. It's a throttle. So when I increase my throttle, You'll notice that I'm now at 100%. I can take it down to about 60 or 50 or whatever I want, and I've got it on a key bind. Um, and then the other thing to note here is this right here is going to tell you what your flight mode is in. And there's really three different ones to keep in mind. PRE stands for precision. It's better thought of as landing mode. Um, you can see here that the landing gear is deployed. If I hit F4 to go look in third person, um, you can see that my landing gear is indeed down, meaning my speed is going to be limited to that standard 50 meters per second. Uh, to retract your landing gear, you just hit N. The landing gear will put itself away. And then your speed will drastically increase. As you can see, I'm now going 265 meters per second without any afterburner or boost. Um, and then the third mode is really kind of a combination of two. You've got your boost, which is going to be how you can make quick maneuvers and like change vectors and things quickly, which you can see there on the screen, it says boost. It basically is like a rapid acceleration option. The other one that you have is your afterburner, which may be different based on your key binds. So you wanna have your afterburner done in a way that you're actually capable of you know, using it and holding it. Default is shift. Um, you can see my quantum fuel or my actual standard fuel is dropping up there. I'm down to 98 instead of 100, but the speed is very rapid. And then once I actually get to my top speed, 
um, I can basically just fly at that speed without using additional quantum fuel if I'm not making flight changes or anything like that. And there we go. So with that in mind, it would take forever to get anywhere in this game, even going uh, 1,230 meters per second. So what you need to do is take advantage of the mechanics in game called quantum travel. Um, quantum travel is going to basically kind of be like your quick travel. Um, eventually there will also be jumping to other systems, but that's not in game yet. So what you want to do here is you want to actually hit your F2 button to bring up your, uh, your star map. Again, I'm going to go to my current location using the crosshairs. I'm going to zoom out until I get some perspective. And then let's just say I want to go to a moon. So I'll pick yellow, which is one of the three moons around this uh, planet. Click set route. Close your Moby Glass by hitting F2 again or F1. Align your ship with the uh, yellow diamond there. And then you'll notice that you're starting to get your quantum system online. In order to actually spool up your drive, you need to hit the B key because you need to calibrate, which is your computer basically setting your route, and then you need to spool the drive, which is it getting ready to fire off. And then in order to engage it, just hold B, and it'll start to jump. It takes just a second to actually get into quantum travel, um, so we'll go ahead and just let it do its thing. And then we are in route over to yellow. The moons don't take very long to get to. Um, now, if you want to jump to a rest stop, which is another type of uh, location, or to uh, the other planet, Hurston, it can take a very long time, but we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail later. So here we are. Uh, this is Yella. It's a moon. <laughs> it's got an asteroid belt around, which you can go explore. It's kind of fun. Um, the other thing I want to show you here is if you hit B again to bring up your quantum travel menu, you'll see that there are different types of locations. There are going to be Grim Hex, which is like a space station. You've got OM, which stands for Orbital Marker, which is you can jump to these to skim your way across the outside of the planet. Um, you've also got some further destinations like Port Alazar, which is where we just came from, other um, moons. But the one I want to really show you here is um, things like this, Benson Mining Outpost um, that are actually on the surface of the planet, um, or the moon, excuse me. Like here's Talarine Divide Shelter. Um, so let's just pick one and jump to it, right? So there's our Corp Mining up there. Spooling has already been completed because I hit B. The calibration is almost completed. So now we're gonna go ahead and make our jump. And we're gonna kind of skim letting the computer do its thing, taking us over to the planet um, or the surface of this moon. It generally will put you about 60 kilometers above the outpost, depending on the height of the actual um, the height of the actual atmosphere here. Um, and then you want to kind of just boost in from there. Um, so I'm going to probably just fast forward this as I go down to the planet's surface. And then as you're approaching the planet, uh, the surface, um, you'll notice if I don't have my quantum menu up, you can't really tell if you're on target to actually find the base or not. What I do is I just have the quantum uh, menu up by hitting B and it'll point you in the right direction, basically saying, okay, look, that's where I'm supposed to be going. Um, if you I hold F and zoom in using my scroll wheel, you can start to see the location pops in a little bit. So I'm obviously on the right track. And then we'll go ahead and get down there and just show it to you in a little bit closer so you can get an idea of what we're talking about here. And here you go. Here's an outpost. So at these locations, you're allowed to really land wherever you want. Um, you can pick a landing pad if that's to your liking. Um, you can end up just parking close to where you want to stop. It doesn't really matter. These small pads right here are where you're going to pick pick up ground vehicles like buggies and rovers and uh, kind of just dune, dune buggies and that sort of thing. Um, whereas over here is just going to be more of your landing pad close to where you're buying and selling commodities because it makes it a little bit more convenient to land. Um, again, you hit the N key. You'll see that I've got kind of the holographic effect showing me that this is the pad that I'm going to be landing on. And then you just ease her down. Wasn't that easy, but we got down. <laughs> um, but since we're not actually planning on staying here doing that sort of thing, I want to take you over here and just show you how you can actually pull a ground vehicle. Again, it's the little blue building if that helps you.
Whenever I get out of a ship on a planet surface, I always turn off the engine. Best practice is generally just to power it off completely because it prevents anybody else from being able to get into your ship. Um, the easiest way to get out of your ship is just to hold H and it'll get you out of your seat. You can also use the inner thought system to look around for the exit button. Oh yeah, and if you just want to see something cool, you know, there's some snow effects in the planet. You've got the actual, uh, what should we call it, the actual asteroid belt. You've got the uh, planet of Crusader that we were looking at. It's just some pretty nice scenery. Uh, one of the best reasons just to get down here and take a look at things in this game because it is beautiful. Anyway, um, we go inside. You're going to go through an airlock. You need to cycle it just like we did when leaving Alizar. Come in, and then you've got two terminals here. Again, most of these ships are not actually going to be spawnable because these two little pads right here are tiny. Um, you can kind of get away with it with a ship like the uh, Misk Razor or the actual um, like M50, the really small racing ships you can tend to access from here. That being said, you generally want to look at the bottom to where you have things like the Ursa Rover, which we'll go ahead and pull. And there you go. There's a ground vehicle. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump back out. we got a little bit more to talk about, but I think just getting you from a space station to a moon and how to pull a vehicle is a pretty good start. Um, and we'll just uh, yeah, regroup on some of the other gameplay options and vehicles that are available. Something else that occurred to me as I was coming back to Alozar was it's probably worthwhile teaching you how to request landing because a lot of these places that are like larger, like stations and cities on planets and stuff, um, you actually have to request landing. Otherwise, you're going to end up getting a crime stat for obstructing a landing pad. So with that in mind, what you want to do is you want to come to the general area where you have a um, you know landing pad available to you. So you can see right here, I'm pretty darn close. Came in a little hot. Um, go ahead and put down your landing gear with the N key. And then you can see none of these have any indicators for me, right? They're all just kind of blank landing pads. You want to use your inner thought system to come to one of your MFDs. MFDs stand for multifunction displays. Uh, once you hit menu, you want to go to comms and then scroll down typically to the bottom until you see landing services. And the name in front of it will vary depending on where you're currently at. So I'm going to call them. They'll tell me that I've got a pad assigned, and there it is. It makes it real easy to find out where you should be taking your ship to land and just to keep things copacetic with the station so you're not ending up getting a crime stat. Enough of a crime stat means you end up getting hunted. So there you go. That's what I forgot to add in there, but I thought was relevant to show. So there is a ton more that I could demo for you, but I mean, we're already at the risk of this becoming a 30 minute video and I wanna try and keep it as concise as possible so people aren't just getting lost in the, de in the minutia and the details. Um, one thing that I would highly encourage people to do is just know that the free fly is a really good chance for like the current citizens to interact with people that are interested in playing the game. And we're a lot, all of us are happy about helping new players. So get into chat, hit F12, start chatting with people, ask questions, ask to borrow ships, ask for a ride, ask for advice. People are happy to help and talk. And if they're not, come talk to me in game and I'm happy to help you too. Um, so with that in mind, there's we talked a little bit about some of the locations. Um, there's kind of some core areas that you may want to check out or should at least be aware of. So around Crusader, which is where we just looked at, the gas giant planet, you've got Port Alizar, which is where we spawned. Um, we've got Yella, which is the moon that has the asteroids around it. Um, you've got Grim Hex, which is a kind of a piratey type base that lives in the asteroid field. Um, you've got another planet, which is called Daymar. It's more of a desert type plant, uh, moon. Uh, it's got a station that's been kind of abandoned in orbit around it called the Kovalik Shipping Hub. And then its third moon is Selen, which has an interesting location in orbit around it called the Security Port Korea. The reason that's an interesting location is because that's the only place you can go in the game right now to hack a system and uh, kind of get rid of your crime stat. Um, you also have the moon of Delamar, um, and it's not actually a moon, it's an asteroid. And again, I mentioned that's being t kind of a temporary location. Um, it's interesting to check out because it is very, very small, but it does have a large outpost on it called Levski um, that has kind of an interesting culture to it. Um, it also has stores, a grand bazaar, um, you know, and a bunch of different places to see. Then you have Hurston, which is another planet. It's the first planet we're actually able to land on. 
Um, just so you know, quantum travel to Hurston from Crusader takes a long time, and that time period depends on what ship you're in. So if you're in a large ship, like a Starfarer or, you know, a Caterpillar or something like that, um, you know, the Reclaimer, it only takes like four minutes. Um, but if you take a small ship, like a light fighter, it's going to take you about 10 to 12 minutes. The game isn't broken. You'll see the distance going down. It's just important to realize that you're talking in the scope of millions of kilometers of distance between them, and you're traveling in semi-real time. So it takes a long time to get there. Um, Hurston's main attraction is going to be Lorville. Um, Lorville is a very, very large city. Um, I did a video uh, about a week ago at this point called Welcome to Lorville. I'd highly suggest you check that out because it's going to go into so much more detail than how, how you get around that place than I'm going to do right now. Um, Lorville does have a no-fly zone around it, so you want to kind of look for this yellowish honeycomb type of appearance. You don't want to fly through that or your ship will be destroyed. Um, it has four moons. It's got uh, Magda, um, which is kind of icy. It's got Ida, which is just kind of rocky. And then Aberdeen and Ariel are both very foreign. They kind of have these yellowish looks to them. They're almost like sulfuric. They're really cool places. Um, all of those moons have outposts on them. Uh, and there are different outposts on Hurston, the proper planet, that have some different biomes and kind of feels to them as well. All of them we're checking out. Uh, and then the last couple of locations that you really have there is there's uh, several truck stops um, that are located at the Lagrange points. Uh, so you want to look for things that say like H U R L one or H U R L two or C U R L one. Those are going to be places where you can go to spawn ships in space. Um, you can also do a little bit of shopping there. They're also really convenient meetup locations, and you know that's basically that. So as far as the gameplay is concerned. Um, there's several different things you can do right now. You can do probably the most common thing to do right now is touring and exploration. You know, just go around, see the sites, visit, hang out with friends, do goofy stuff. Um, but past that, you can do commodities hauling to where you buy goods at one location and sell at another. There's a lot of guides out there on what's actually good profit runs that'll get you some money. Um, you can do combat. You can fight pirates. You can fight each other. Um, you know, you can take on bounties and use the mission system. Um, you can escort your friends that are doing cargo runs. Um, you can do mining. Um, the only mining ship that's in game right now is the Prospector, um, but it will give you a taste of what space mining is going to be like on the smallest scale and just understand that it goes up to a much larger scale. Um, you can do some racing, whether that's in Arena Commander or if you just want to take some ships down and do a race on a planet or do the scramble races. And you've got different options as far as taking advantage of those racing ships. And then the last thing is just shopping. You know, you can go around and actually check out different locations, spend your money, um, you know, and just really do whatever you want. I mean, you can buy guns, you can buy components for your ships, you can buy uh, clothing, you can buy spacesuits and armor. There's a lot you can do to kind of customize your character right now. So... I hope that gives you guys a fairly good overview of how to just get going in free flight because I understand that it could be a little bit overwhelming, especially since there's not really a proper tutorial in place yet today. Um, if you guys have questions, remember, use chat, ask questions in the comments below. Um, there's a lot of good people out there to help. Um, two different things I want to throw out there. One is that uh, there is a referral program in this game. I'm not going to lie, it benefits me. I get stuff when you guys sign up, but the important thing there is if if you thought this video was helpful and you signed up because of me, I like you guys to use it, but you also get 5,000 um, in-game credits by using that system. So it gives you a little bit of an advantage as of just signing up on your own. Um, the other one is just a kind of a shout out to my organization, Planet Express Crew. If you guys have interest or just want to kind of come in and talk to people, even if you haven't signed up for the game and you just want to talk to other people that are in channel, um, there's information about the referral program and PXP in the comment section below. Um, I'd highly suggest you checking out PXP. Not as only is it a good organization, but it's a lot of knowledgeable people that like helping people out. So that's it for now. If you guys have questions, let me know. I appreciate you guys dealing with the long-winded. Otherwise, stay tuned for a lot more coming soon and have yourselves a wonderful day. Take care.